Well, good morning. I have been up for three hours already. I got up at 4 a.m. and walked over here to this amazing temple and it was totally worth it. And the photos are incredible, so go check them out on Instagram, link in the description below. But when I woke up, it was 38 degrees and now it is 40 degrees three hours later, so I am very, very cold. So I am just walking down these steps right now and it is off to try and warm myself up. I think that's gonna be the theme of the day today. Uh, so I think I'm gonna go get some coffee and then after that, I'm gonna try and go experience a Japanese onsen, which is like a hot spring bath type place. I don't know what really to expect, but it should be fun, so let's get after it. and it's just a hot spring and naked only so got my Japanese robe on and now it's time to get in the hot water and get naked with a bunch of other dudes so let's go well the water feels amazing but it's definitely a weird experience being uh, just naked in front of everyone so that's not something I'm used to not something I'm generally cool with so uh, today's an interesting day but I'm enjoying it I mean, look at how beautiful it is out here. So peaceful, nice place to do some thinking. <sighs> well, I definitely feel way more relaxed. That was fantastic. It's kind of awkward filming in there, so I was just using my phone kind of secretly because everyone is naked. So hopefully I got just a, a couple clips that work. Now I'm headed off to go get some lunch and just explore this area because this is my one and only full day here and then I'm back to Tokyo tomorrow, so let's get after it. Well, I forgot to mention this earlier at the onsen. Uh, if you have tattoos and you'd like to go to one when you come to Japan, I think most of them you, you're not allowed. The one that I went to, there are signs everywhere that say, if you have tattoos, sorry, but you cannot come in. So. I don't know why that is. Japan kind of has a, a real hot and cold relationship with tattoos, I guess. In traditional Japanese culture, I think they're kind of frowned upon, but uh, nowadays the younger generation is kind of adopting them and starting to get them more and more. But if you have one, still not allowed. I think in most, definitely in the one that I went to. And now I think I'm just gonna try and fly the drone around here because it is so beautiful. Well, hello. Unfortunately, today is the day that I leave Japan and the trip is actually coming to a close. So I am headed to the airport now and then it is off to Seattle to go uh, kind of sort my life out and figure out what the next step is. And uh, I think it's gonna be pretty great. But before I get to that, I want to talk about my experience here in Japan and kind of do a, a, a wrap up because uh, Japan is a very interesting place. To start, Japan is exactly like I had expected, which is kind of strange because nowhere else I went was the way that I expected it to be. This is the one place and, and it's been fantastic. I've really enjoyed my time here. Getting around here has been kind of tough because a lot of the signs, especially outside of Tokyo, are all in Japanese. And because they use a character-based system, it's impossible for me to even try and start reading. I would need to do a ton of uh, language study to get to that point. And Google Translate works to an extent, but it's still not perfect, so I had a lot of trouble in uh, Kyoto getting around, and just in Japan in general getting around. Even though the train system is extremely uh, efficient and useful, it's been kind of tough for me because I don't speak the language at all. Another thing that I found very interesting about Japan is that the money system is very much coin-based. Um, you have the smallest denomination of bill that I've found is 1,000 yen, 
which is you know a little less than 10 bucks and then underneath that you have the 500 yen coin which is worth a lot of money and it's very easy to lose like coins are so easy to lose so you have 500 100 50 10 5 and then the one yen which is like the penny but worse and uh, in, in the United States I am a huge advocate of them getting rid of the penny and just rounding it all out for so many reasons but here in Japan I am a bigger advocate of getting rid of the one yen coin because it's useless and I, today is the day where I try and get rid of all of my coins because sometimes I walk around and I'm like man my left pocket is weighed down because I have so many. Another thing that I found very very interesting is the use of umbrellas here is on a very throwaway basis. So when people are walking around, no one has umbrellas. The second it starts raining, you go to a convenience store, buy an umbrella, use it while it's raining, and then just throw it away because they are quite cheap. It's a very convenient way to go, but it's super, super wasteful because they're, they're super nice umbrellas. And you know, for using it for maybe an hour or so, it doesn't seem like a great idea to me, but it's interesting. All right, I'm gonna go jump on the train and uh, see if I can come up with some other topics of conversation here, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, well I just got into the airport and I had to get here super, super early, so now I'm just hanging out with plenty of time to kill before my flight because, once again, the unknown factor when taking the n notoriously on-time Japanese subway system is my ability to interpret the signs and figure out how to get where I'm going. So, as always, it takes a little bit longer for me because I have no idea what I'm doing. But I made it and uh, I left myself plenty of time so now I am nice and relaxed which is always a good way to start the flight. But before I get on my flight I wanted to talk about a couple of the things that I think Japan is so incredible for. So specifically in Tokyo I was really impressed with how three-dimensional the city is. So in the United States we have you know maybe a subway system, the surface roads, and then you know skyscrapers which is great and it works um, because things are more spread out generally other than maybe New York and some of the big city centers um, but here because Tokyo is like a massive city made up of massive cities there's no space for anything so what they've done is clearly made a decision at some point in time to say we're gonna modernize and just over engineer this thing and so they have the subway they have the surface level streets which are quite small and uh, some of them can get pretty busy but generally they're kind of small and more just one lane streets uh, going either way and then you come across the freeway which is to me the most impressive building project maybe that I've ever seen because they've elevated the freeways in a lot of cases at least from what I've seen they're above the surface streets in the city and they just kind of like drive around on these sky tracks essentially and it's extremely smart because the freeways can be larger quieter and they take up no extra room they take up room that's above other streets so it's it's really amazing and it was so so cool to see and when i actually went out to the yamanashi prefecture we took a bus and that's how I got there was along these freeways that are elevated and it is, it's just amazing. I mean, that is such an undertaking, but it's so smart. And when I was in Kyoto, I went to the Kyoto uh, History Museum and they were talking about how at some point in the past, I'm not sure exactly what year, but they, as a city decided, okay, starting now we are going to modernize and with that we're gonna make everything future-proof essentially and I thought that was really cool it was a cool approach to it and it's something I think 
in the United States, we could take a page out of that book because we kind of have Frankensteined all our cities together and depending on where you are, there are signs of uh, that approach reaching the end of its usability. So it might make sense for us to do something similar in the future. Transportation in general here is like way, way more effective than it is in the United States. And part of that is the ability and willingness for people to take public transportation, so like the train and the bus. And uh, I think that as the United States grows and gets closer together and cities get more busy, I think that will begin to change. But I think if we had a train system or a subway system like they do here, things would be way different. And not everyone would be relying on cars, which would be a good thing and it's another good change I think we could make. Yeah, but all of that being said, I had a fantastic time here in Japan and a fast, fantastic time traveling in general. I knew that it would make me want to continue traveling and go see more of the world, but I really had no idea how much it would make me want to go continue traveling. There's just so much out there to see and I cannot wait to get back after it. But that is gonna have to wait until later for now. I've got some big things ahead and uh, things are gonna get pretty crazy. I'm gonna be making a few other videos about my travels um, before starting a completely new chapter and uh, I think it's gonna be pretty incredible. So I hope you guys stick around to watch that and I will see you guys then, bye.